That didn't last long, did it? No. Nope. But it continues. Didn't last long, it continues. What's continuing is what they're all doing to us that we're not stopping. And we're attempting to push back, but I see lots of things going on and people still making lots of mistakes while they try, which is, is okay. You, you learn by your mistakes, but the way we're, what we're up against as a society is something of uh, destruction, and the only the, those that are running that destruction take great pleasure to continue your destruction if you don't quite do it just right. You know, you've got a, a lot of detractors about what I say in uh, getting involved in a more proper way, but uh, the bottom line is when you see how to do it better, uh, you, well, you should you see how to do it better, you should be doing better. If you find out that you, nothing changes, it gets worse because someone else wants a, an agenda, their their idea of what they want in the world, like the future we want, not yours, and you don't stop that, then who's to blame, actually? And so, you don't know what more to say about getting people more involved in places that they can. And there's ways to go about it. And yes, it is a learning curve. Yes, you are going to have a, a brain pain uh, but it just shows you how far away from really understanding beyond an opinion that there's a wrong, actually how, what to do ab about it. And your mind has to take a just, a adju big adjustment to do that. It, it takes a little bit of, uh, a little bit of rethinking. You actually have to get through what you know is the dastardly deed going against the whole, whole of the world, actually. And you, you have to look past that and you have to start to figure out, okay, there it is. We know it. We see it. Now what are we going to do about that? If we don't do something about it, that thing is coming on us. It's the inevitable, you know, if you have a tidal wave coming, what are you going to do about that? Now, it seems like an impossibility, but maybe, as I've suggested, we need to surf the tsunami. I mean, we need to get on that thing. Or, or we'd be more like the elephants and we run away until it, it hits and comes back. Societally, we're not the elephants that can go to the mountain. And so the task at hand really seems to be one of, uh, you better you better get your board ready, because it's, it's a fact it's here. And we're all going to drown underneath the pressure, uh, drown by the tsunami of wrong, or else we're going to figure out how to how to survive it, body surf even if we don't have a board, something, something. Otherwise, it consumes us. It just takes us down. And it's interesting just thinking of it where the tsunami came from. Uh, I preloaded the, the tabs to talk about things, and, and it happens to be a, a tsunami. But, uh, interesting. Before we go too farther, much farther, those of you on the past cast in any place, this uh, uh, this will be BTWRLM336 for anybody who wants to uh, get the links, and you can take the lead uh, that is there and uh, make it what you will. And uh, I try to put together links that will give you a start, a good start, and if you're interested in, in, in getting more deeply involved to be able to figure out how to how to resolve things. And I've tended to focus on things I can resolve instead of things that uh, are are out there to understand and know. I said, you know, you could, as I posted in the Twitter, the society is becoming this uh, laboring junk lady, you know, all this knowledge without action. We just collect up this stuff and we put it on us, put it in our brain, it's invisible, so we don't really see the big pile of junk on our back, and yet it's all in our head, and we do, don't do anything with it. And that's not, not going to help any one of us, and it's not going to help us uh, generally together. Now, I've also found that when you start having to focus on things, a lot of that, you slough all that stuff off. The stuff that you don't need really falls away, and it doesn't go away completely. It sits back in there. If you ever need it, you can go back to it if it's really important. And the more important thing I found out is even if I don't know too much, and I know about something, I can go back and find what it needs to be. I can go track back. And I have a better refined look at what I'm doing as well. And so I'm going to do this today. I wasn't going to touch this too much more. I'm really you know, beyond uh, the discussion of it, but it seems to keep coming back, and I actually predicted it would be. This is one of those other trauma-based things that keep going on that, uh, that uh, people want. Uh, the, whoever wants to do this is, is throwing it back in our face. There's like the inevitable, predictable, all this other stuff. And then you look at it, people get all fried about it, well, maybe literally if they're close enough in this case, but uh, they're really not understanding a real dynamic that is going on. That's, uh, they're already stewing in the nonsense uh, and don't realize that they've accepted it there, but they'll point to someone else's place and say that's the problem. 
and I always find fascination in this. So what came up, and I was going to pass by, but it, what came up was uh, the story, remember Fukuzilla? Back in 2011, we had that earthquake and the tsunami that took out a power plant. Well, that came back up in the news, and I was going to let it go, but then I started to think about something, and it kind of got me on a trail. And I want to kind of go through this a little bit, because what I found at the end was more uh, fascinating about uh, us, our bodies and things, and how really it just kind of points out how the, how the government, the powers that, uh, that have uh, the say and the notice to you all, how far wrong they have it. And actually, how much we, we don't, well, maybe for myself, I'll, know, I'll talk, maybe you all knew better than this, but how how much we don't know about what our bodies need and how we are directed to do things that maybe are insufficient. And when I get to the end of this, I think you'll see something that is uh, pretty pretty fascinating in some regard. Again, we allow, we point out Fukuzilla over there in, in Japan, and I told you, I talked about all of this. I told you all about how the fraud was. I showed and exposed to you how it was just like climate change, the, the, the plume. Remember the plume? All that stuff. I told you I explained all the the ocean uh, gyre uh, pro point, the eddies in that, in that thing. I pointed all of this stuff out to show you that there was not going to be the problem that we see. Now, I'm not saying that I'm, I've always said that everyone wants to jump on the other side. I'm not saying we want nuclear pollution in the ocean. That's that's certainly not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that we can overblow some of this stuff, and or we can go ahead and get uh, suckered in by snake oil salesmen. And remember, those uh, this is something about radiation and poisoning and how to part of this is part of protect yourself from that. If there is going to be the pollution, what are you going to protect? And a lot of this, uh, all of a sudden, there was these potassium iodide, very expensive potassium iodide. People made lots of money. People in alternative media made lots of money on potassium iodide. Now, I didn't do too much research. I understand the mechanism. So I figured, okay, that's, that's, uh, I guess that's something you do when that's going to be a threat. My, my call to you was don't, maybe in Japan, that's a threat. Here in, a, uh, in the United States, not so much. Pointed out numerous occasions. Pointed out how the, the radiation is already in your, it, it, probably in a town near you, if not in your town. Pro produced evidence on how it's already in the oceans on the coast. Produced, remember, the, I produced the, I was uh, looking at the, Satellite images of um, one of the Great Lakes and found uh, Ohio, where there was an, a nuclear reactor that off-gassed on the thermal uh, imaging, the satellite infrared. I point, I was able to identify for you uh, the next broadcast that they had, uh, I think it went into uh, Montreal, I think it was, maybe, or maybe Ottawa. But anyway, there was a news article that said uh, that, that said that there was an increased Fukuzilla attacked uh, that town over there in Kanukistan. And I pointed out to you that week, I said, no, this was an off-gas that came from an existing Ohio nuclear power plant. And I proved that for those anybody that saw that then. The point is that there's, uh, we're talking about radiation, we're talking about the occurrence of it, we're talking about people that snake uh, snake oil salesmen, but underneath this is a, is a truth that starts to come out after I started looking at it again, because I tell you, I don't know so much sometimes, I just know what I know, and some things capture my mind, and i got to go re-inspect re re it, and this is one of those issues. Fukuzilla, I'm not interested in. I'm not interested in the hype. I'm not interested in what's going on. What happened that started this for myself and for people is the, the news went around. Japan may be forced to dump radioactive Fukushima water into the Pacific. Okay, so there we, we, there's there been this threat the whole time. I, I've been kind of wondering what the big problem was. Is they had to store all this water coming from the plant that they've been dumping in to try and keep that nugget that was going to burn itself to the center of the earth and, and blow us up cool, and uh, so they had a lot of this water that was coming off. They've been uh, dumping water in the, in the, in the Pacific uh, periodically, uh, as we were told. But, but this, uh, I started to look at this, and Japan may be forced to dump water. They were saying they're going to be forced to dump water. My view, uh, my little pea brain was saying, why? Uh, the radioactivity is a particle. We talked about this, too. Now, that's where I had to get educated a bit, because I forgot in that statement there's a couple gases that are developed, but we also found out, and this is the big, another aerosol plume that they said was threatening us, the iodine-131 problem. Remember, that's an eight-day half-life. And I told you then, if you look at the weather patterns, unless that uh, stuff gets put up in the atmosphere, which we found out probably couldn't happen, uh, and get and moved over to the United States really, really fast, and it was taking six, seven days for a weather front to come through, Unless it moves right on right on through, which most of the time it doesn't. It goes, goes through the highs and lows and all that circuitous action and the moving highs and lows of the current. 
that it wouldn't even have, by the time it got to the West Coast, one thirty iodine-131, wouldn't even, radioactive iodine-131 wouldn't be existent to be measured. And so nobody wants to look at all this stuff. Well, so I said, well, what's the radioactive Fukushima water? What, what's in there? It's the particles you can you can filter. It's certainly not 131. Well, they're not really saying is what caught my mind. They're not the silence. They're not saying why this why they can't just filter this out. And my pea brain says, well, they should be able to filter it out. Why can't they? Well, it turns out they're not talking about something. While we're all focused on 131 and cesium-137 and all this stuff, there's another radioactive particle. Uh, excuse me, it might be a gas. I think it's a gas, but I can't really make heads or tails of this one either in the time I had to spend on it. Anyway, so I look, well, what do you do? What's, why can't they clean up this radioactivity? If it's a particle, it should be filtered. All this time, they should have at least been doing reverse osmosis. At least. Now, if they want to take out the gas, if it's still existent, why don't they use carbon? Now, they would be con taking all this water and reducing it down to a smaller amount. And yes, it doesn't, not quite 100%, but it's certainly not 100%, and it's only down in a few percent of any type of particle that could get through. So what's the, why haven't they been processing this the whole time? Well, it turns out there's another iodine uh, particle, radio radionuclei, and it's uh, it's iodide-129. And that led to a whole other look, and that's when this started to get interesting to me, and then it turned out to be something that said, this is, in, this is a serious enough, it's always going on, that we as a people need to know it's not, not being filtered out. I've told you, I know, told you, I've reported on it. Whether I know the extent of it is not important, that it happens all over the place. When you had Fukuzilla attacking Florida, I told you that was a problem. You, you can't do that. It's just the, the, wor the air flows at that, on that weren't going to happen. Even in the worst winter, you only, you, you only freeze the top of Florida. These air currents don't get that far down. And so there's a problem. We have radiation in our, in our environment. But, okay, so we, have come up through radiation. There's also natural radiation. Our bodies are uh, res resistant to some extent, and we have the ability in our bodies to be able to fortify ourselves to some extent. And so th my mind is going through all this while I'm looking at professor comes up with a way to neutralize radioactive iodine in the microwave. And so I said, okay, well, here, if it's not a filter, if there's this other thing called iodine-129 uh, that's radioactive, and it's very persistent, and they don't know what to do with it, Maybe this guy has a, a maybe this guy has an answer, and so people are working on this, and it's specifically iodine-129, which has a 15.6 or 7 million year half-life. In other words, its radiologic effects are halved over that time period. It's a long-range, long-range um, radio nucleide concern, and so that's the real, apparently the real problem, even though they're not talking about it. And it is a byproduct of nuclear waste. And it is a byproduct of nuclear waste disposal, which caught my mind again for all y'all. We're talking about nuclear power. We've talked about that in the past. And the fact is uh, they have to process this stuff, and they can. It, it only reduces, I think, about 5 or 6 percent. And they can, and then they have to reprocess it to get it back up for, for nuclear power. And the problem is, I guess, in the, in the, in the reprocessing. Well, they have waste in what they're doing there. Always, what we do, energy creates wastes of sorts. Now, what's interesting, too, is I found out, because I didn't really remember about iodine-129. It's a radioactive iodine, but it's also a naturally occurring iodine at some level. And what's interesting is it starts to break down my, uh, break down my ideas of uh, what I was learning about chemistry, or my, my intuition was actually better than what I was being told about chemistry. There's a, and I won't get too deep into uh, the possibility of transmutation, but we see evidence of the constructions of min mineral um, matter uh, are pretty fluid uh, in their own, and this iodine-129 can be created by uh, the irradiation of a xenon gas, uh, and it breaks down a xenon gas. It breaks down into iodine-129, which is persistent for 15.7 million years, and it also is uh, a fact a byproduct of a tellurium-130, I think, breakdown. And so we have some mechanism where this stuff is really naturally occurring. Certainly it's not very much, but it's there. And so we've, 50 million years, people have grown up inside this, and they've had to adjust in the body. Uh, chem DNAs have all done their thing, and we're here still surviving. So not to agree with the pollution, but, but to 
but pull down. With, they're 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 doing this other trauma based thing with this Fukuzilla. That I, I this is why I want to address it. That we have to become more knowledgeable to start looking at the reality of the risk and what we might be able to do with it. It's on us, folks. It's like we don't buy into cl consensus like climate change. We don't buy into these consensus ideas. Uh, you know, and I saw it on vaccines. There's a consensus about vaccines. But, but where's the safety studies? There, There is none. And this is the problem. This is all the bottom line. So moving back into iodine-129, which looks like the real culprit, this uh, professor uh, tries to uh, work this through. And uh, interesting stuff. All this scientific stuff is very interesting. We're muddling around in all how we do this, how we're trying to take, take care of the waste that's produced. And he works out a situation. Well, when you're going through the story and you see what they do, they can do certain things, uh, but it may not be applicable to uh, Fukushima and the threat, uh, the claim that they can do nothing more than dump it into the water, the Pacific Ocean, to dilute it. And, in fact, it would be quite diluted. And so, like I told you before, I'm not too serious. I don't like to hear it, but I don't know what else you're going to do. And I don't know, uh, again, instead of looking at climate change, they should have all those scientists looking at this problem and then maybe we would be able to do anything. But I, okay, so I have some links on what iodine-131 is. You can read it. It's, again, only a few day half-life. There's some iodine uh, radioisotopes that are actually in hours and days of breakdown. So all those things are really not even considerate today after uh, 2011. Uh, what pollution are they dumping in the ocean? They're not saying, but it looks like it's possibly this, of other things, of other, like cesium and all this other stuff that is particles that they could use reverse osmosis. There may be a radioactive uh, gases. That, and I don't understand how this 129 still sits in the water, uh, but uh, I couldn't find enough information on the time I could expend to look at this. However, let's just deal with it as a, it's an, it's an existent thing, however it, it exists. It's, and it's understood to be very, very hard to deal with. Uh, in fact, there is no answer we find out. There's no viable answer. And so this is when we get to the point they can only do something like dump it in the water. I think we're talking, again, remember, we're living in a world of risks, risk management. Uh, that's how the whole thing is really wired. And so you have to take your risk. That's what the vaccine does. You, you have to take your risk versus being killed by what you're going to do versus what the vaccine will do to you. And we know the vaccine will do to something to you because it says in the data sheet that it's going to do something to you, possibly. And so you're weighing, these are the weights of, of, the, of what society does. Then you have this government that comes in and does standards for our, uh, what would be helpful to us. And they have their own reasons for what they do, or maybe non-reason, or whatever that we understand is a problem relative to how we protect ourselves. Now, you see the iodine is radioactive. It can be harmful. But we also need radio, iodine in our system. Okay, and iodine's a very, and I'm finding out now after the reading, iodine's very important to our system. It's much more important than I thought, although I'm pretty, I've been more and more focused on it here in the last few years. That this now maybe pushes me over the edge to understand what the problem will actually be and what we might be able to do about all this stuff. Because it's not Fukuzilla out there, folks. It's right around you. And, to, to, bring, to bring that home, it was, a, if you will, a shock, if I can say it's a shock. There was um, an article that I ran across, and I'm, I'm not sure where I saw it. Uh, it was, uh, oh, that's right, it was this uh, doctor that had the, uh, the, the idea of what to do with the radioiodine, which, uh, 129, which he actually could not, de uh, the process doesn't look applicable. But at the second page of this story was a real eye-opener, but consistent with what I've told you. I've told you that the, the, the sources of all this radiation is man-made locally around you somewhere. And I don't know if anybody, you want to look it over at Fukuzilla, but uh, those of you off uh, uh, off the Irish Sea coast of Sellafield, you, you, you probably already know this. So I don't know what Fukuzilla was doing. This also answers why we saw some possible radiation counts over there in the, in Europe at the time that they blamed on Fukuzilla. But uh, there's a quote here on the second page of this article I'll give you. In spent nuclear fuel, the iodine is not immobilized, so once the containment is breached, it simply gets dispersed. At present, iodine-129 released by nuclear fuel pro reprocessing is discharged direct to the Irish Sea off the coast of Sellafield. Substantial quantities of this radioisotope were also released into the sea off the uh, Japan and Fukushima incident. Uh, or new uh, our new method offers a way of safely and 
rapidly containing this radionuclide, reducing the potential long-term impact on human health from discharge to the environment. They're claiming that it's applicable. I, if there was a possibility that this was applicable, I think Fukushima would have tamed Fukuzilla with it, don't you? So the point is that they're working on it, and they're also admitted, and this is where I'm going to, another theme today will be, look in certain articles to see proving, proving certain other facts that are denied or not looked at. In this case, if we're going to move from here, from iodine, we're moving in through what radi radionuclide iodine into normal iodine into, flor into its counteracting fluoride and other halides. And so you're going to see how I think, uh, I'm trying to drag us through this um, to show us uh, that there's ways to take this information and start applying it against the system in the case of fluoride, I'm not going to end up just at fluoride, but fluoride is going to be part of this story, uh, against showing you that fluoride is, a, they know, the scientists know it's a toxic, but they also have, show that there's a way to combat it, and this will offer you an ability to go after a, a jurisdiction that wants to do fluoridation, and then you can also throw in, well, if you're going to do fluoridation, you also better be doing some iodidation for, for new su supplements. And this starts to allow you some leverage where no one's listening. Uh, to bring forward the either the elimination of a toxin or the the help to mitigate the effects of a toxin. Now we're back to risk management. And I'm speaking this way because if you start thinking about this this way, I think we'll move quicker through because we're in a time where you got to give everybody their say, regardless of how ridiculous it seems to be. And so you've got to come with a, a, a bigger pile of uh, not just logic and facts. You've got to be able to come up with really the, the actual answers that may be uh, more unpalatable to a system that wants to claim it has money uh, from property taxes that it doesn't want to raise and to decide, well, if you're going to do fluoridization on this case, you're also going to have to bring a remedy against its toxicity. And we can show you that there's testing that iodine needs to be increased way more, way, way, way more than the federal government says so. Now, the minimums, those are minimums, and they're to do a so, certain salvation for iodine. So we have good iodine, bad iodine, but those of you that thought Fukuzilla was attacking Europe, no, 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 it was right off the coast of, uh, of the, Irish, uh, the Irish Sea. You know? uh, so, as I was telling you before, this proved out that there's uh, radiation everywhere. This particular type of radiation is apparently very, very difficult to figure out how to get rid of. It's not so simple just to filter it out like a particle and reduce the size and, and at least start putting, like a water sewage treatment plant would do, put a much cleaner uh, effluent into a water structure than, than the natural contamination. Uh, so what's the impossibility maybe telegraphed by Japan saying they're just going to dump this stuff. Why? Because it's very possible... This iodine-129 is a real culprit, and they really don't know what to do with it. And when we're faced with that, what do we do is really another thing. You, if you can get your mind into the imp solving, if you will, the impossibles or mitigating the impossibles in everything you uh, see you hear me talk about, you're going to be stepping like way up in the game. You'll be right up in where you're talking beyond everybody, not to talk up beyond everybody and not beyond them, but above them, but not for the sake of that, but to give a better answer to bring sanity back into reality. And so this, again, I'm not interested in Fukuzilla. I'm not interested in really the iodine-129. It's something new I learned. I didn't realize it was that difficult. Uh, I learned it's something that uh, has to be dealt with particularly, and it starts to answer why we have a problem, in, in uh, a real problem in, in Japan. Does that go around the world? It doesn't have to. The, the radiation's everywhere, it seems. As I told you, you read these stories. If you get these links, read the stories. You'll see what I've said in the past years. It's in every, almost every institutional capacity. There's off-gassings going on all the time. There's this stuff going out in the environment all the time. And it's just, it's just a function of, of how we exist. And like I said, I'd, I'd much rather see scientists instead of focusing on uh, some fraud called climate change uh, under the color like they're doing something about pollution, actually looking at how to deal. Look at all the brains that could have been put on something like this. One scientist already thinks he's got at least a handle on some of it. Look at what we could be focusing on instead of the future we want, which is a bunch of psychopaths trying to push a, an agenda. As I've said before, if they get that one wrong, we're all going to have a lot of trouble if it goes the other way, and there's indication it would. Same thing here. You talk about a nuclear winner. 
we're all not aware of it. But I'm still of the sense that uh, there's a natural natural protection still. Again, we did come up. There is a, you can read how this is a natural decomposition byproduct. Uh, 129, natural. It's in the solar system. It happens. In fact, even though I don't necessarily agree with the proof, they can actually look at asteroids and the content of iodine 129 to see. They claim it comes out of uh, the birth of stars. They can claim where, how long ago that rock came from there. Uh, point is, they're looking at it. Uh, when they also told me that tellur tellurium 130 was involved uh, to be broken down into the same thing, I said, oh, well, that kind of blows that theory. But anyway, they, they can look at these byproducts and they tell you something. In fact, 129 is used and has been used as a, a check versus old water and new water relative to water aquifer dynamics. And so they, they actually use this, even though they tell you it's bad, they actually use this stuff to do things for measurements uh, in other capacities. Now, so this brought me on, okay, well, uh, all this stuff in my mind, my mind's kind of flushing through together, you know, putting ideas together, uh, was about the big deal, the big snake oil thing about potassium iodide solving Fukuzilla for you, and I, and I said, you know, this is not, Yes, you need to bring your standard up, but there was no talking about what that would take at the time. And then I saw the the Irish Sea problem, and I said, this stuff really is potent, and it really is around. So what what do we have available for each one of us to understand beyond the hype, beyond the scam, beyond the snake oil, beyond the consensus-driven hysteria, uh, the reality of it? And our life is apparently even naturally a radiated place. And uh, how are we supposed, how would we, what it mechanism do we have available to us the way we're constructed, our bodies? And it so happens that we're the same radioactive element, the same element that goes radioactive is also very helpful in this matter. And we know this, uh, for women know this, and this is another thing that comes out, uh, a link for you. Uh, w women, listen up. You need a ton more iodine in your system. A ton more. Well, maybe not a ton. A milligram tons, if you will relative to the micrograms they tell you you all need. Uh, and researching through this, what do we do to protect ourselves, not from Fukuzilla, not from the fact they got to dump the water in because of uh, iodine-129, that they're already dumping over in the reprocessing plant in the IRC. It's that this is in the environment. And it's probably not going away soon. 50 million years is uh, not happening tomorrow. Uh, we have a reality to deal with. And how might we do that? We understand that if we there were the hype was if we put iodine in our systems and we filled our thyroid up it would not be dis it would not the body wouldn't take up the radioactive iodine we understand we've heard that mechanism we understand it what i'd never really thought about and what turned up here was how long this replacement is it's is it like do you take a tablet is it an like an aspirin if i take a have a headache i take a I, I take an aspirin and my headache goes away it works works within 20 minutes your mind tends to think like that. Western medicine tends to think it, it can do that kind of thing. But remember, you always have an underlying cause. And I'm always looking at that. When I got into herbs, long, and I was more into herb, herbal things and remedies, uh, there's a whole different thought. Again, you have a different thought process on how you approach this. You're really looking more at cause and system, your, your body systems. And, and so this starts how I look at some of this. Well, right across a... Uh, knowing that iodine was important, and then seeing the propensity of iodine-129 that can't be filtered out, and the risk management idea, okay, if we're going to do this, we're going to have to deal with it. Can we deal with it? Can our bodies deal with it? We find out that we can stop illness. Goiter is the reason why you have the supplemented salts, iodized salts, and then you see a 150 microgram, not milligram, but microgram minimum, to, and that's to keep that point away. The point is, is well, what else would it do? What else does iodine do? Well, the minimum is not going to be enough. And women, when you find out about this this situation, you really need to listen to it. Guys too, but I was shocked at at all the things that iodine does beyond what I always I already thought it was big, and we already knew the mechanism of filling the thyroid, if you will, filling it with iodine so that the body won't the, the that organ won't absorb the radioactive iodine. If you get past, if the iodine radioactive goes through, however you ingest it uh, in your lungs or you drink it in the water or some food or whatever, how is the body dealing with it? Well, you fill up the bucket called the thyroid with what it needs and it won't be looking for anything more. 
The problem with that is there's an excretion rate. Uh, and there's an uh, there's an excretion rate in the ta- intake, and there's an excretion rate I- over the over time in the body. There's a it, it actually converts, degradates, and then it has to be replaced. And I didn't understand this dynamic. I didn't understand the time. My mind was saying aspirin. Well, that's why you could take your your potassium iodide tablets that everyone was selling for exorbitant, thievery s- s- prices at the time of Fukuzilla. The problem is we didn't, I didn't really pay attention, but I just ran across some things that you all need to know. If you understand that you got radiation in your environment and you now see that it's everywhere, like I told you, and you want to protect yourself, you're going to have to find out what, what can do, you can use to protect you. There's more organs in your body, as I read here now, more organs in your body that need iodine. And they need a ton, I'll say a ton. It's so much more. It's thousands and thousands of times more than the gov- United States government will tell you you need to keep goiter off of you. Then you find out that iodine, even beyond what I thought it was doing, iodine uh, in some studies, in some reviews by doctors, uh, accounts for about 50% of the function of your immune system. When you start looking at these kinds of things, and you're looking at being severely under, inadequately supplemented, you realize, and you see what it's tied to, you start realizing the, work, the government's not doing us any services. Uh, they're doing us a disservice. We're not helping ourselves, and we have a lot more to do. I'm not here today to sell, sell iodine supplements. I'm here today to tell you that we always have, there always seems to be something we can do for us. We need to take responsibility. Uh, you're going to have to study this more that, that you think you need. I was just astounded at what this this naturally occurring non-radiative iodine does in our bodies and where it's actually stored. We think of it uh, as about a, a stopping thyroid disease, but it it's, it's, um, has more things it does. It's uh, it, 84% of women with thyroid disease have fibrocystic uh, breasts. Uh, we move into the breasts. We also move into the ovaries. As we read through this, as I was reading through the stories, and you'll get all these links, you can read about it. And I don't say limited here, but you find out that instead of micrograms, you, you need milligrams. Now, I'm not saying for you to take it. Everybody is absolutely different. In other words, when you see this, you see that not everybody is deficient. Only 94% of you. Which means that some of you don't really, some of you are okay, but but you won't know that until you do the proper checks. And the fact is that you're likely not uh, in the current system. And in the 30s, we were getting a whole lot more iodine than we are now. And after the 30s, the availability of iodine in our food dropped dramatically. Now, I'm not going to go through all the the discussion on that. We can find out. The point is is that today it appears 94%, as a doctor says, 94% of his studies, in a small sample, of course, but this leads us on on a path were extremely deficient, women more. Uh, let me read here about for women, about iodine. It is a trace mineral from a food from food and is needed for every cell in the body. Now, that was a big deal, too, every cell. Now, I, I understand this in the con- general concepting, but uh, when we're looking at fighting against something like uh, iodine, uh, radioactive iodine, and other health matters, remember, that r- wasn't radiation poisoning. We were talking about fibrocystic breasts, we're talking about thyroid misfunction, we're talking about bodily functions that are failing, and these are immune system functions, and this is the, the key piece, that uh, this food is needed in every cell of the body. The, the body, now, the body requires, you know, the, again, our, our DA of this is 150 micrograms. Here, this is in grams, folks, what they're saying the body needs, and this looks consistent with other doctors. I'm going to read this part, and I'm going to move on to a doctor's uh, view, a couple of doctors talking to this, which I think is important for us to understand. If we want to be healthy, we're going to have to start looking and taking responsibility for that, and we can do that on our own. And and, And I think in ways I was looking, the tablets are still very expensive, but you can find bulk crystals that made it look a lot more proper. But uh, you're looking at the, instead of micrograms a day, the body requires 12.5 grams a day of iodine for full sufficiency. Or that the thyroid takes 6 milligrams, the breasts take 5 milligrams, 
then the other glands, including the ovaries, grab an, uh, about two milligrams. Women, if you're only getting, even if you're, if you're not taking supplementation, you're not getting any of this. Even if you are taking the minimum of supplementation at 150 micrograms in a vitamin tablet, uh, 150 micrograms does not even come close to even the two milligrams that, sits, that your ovaries need. When you see that the, this is an immune system condition, possibly up to 50%, uh, are, is there any, uh, re, any doubt why we may be, and I'm not saying it's a cause, but why we may be seeing such problems in, 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 in women today in regards of these, uh, these organs? I couldn't. I'd say, well, this is a pretty big deal that needs to be looked at. This is so important now, even though I wasn't interested in Fukuzilla, and I didn't know about uh, 129 being so difficult to get out, even if even if we, but that we don't understand how much we need brings us susceptible to all this radiation. And then to see how much a, a woman's body needs and how many women I've heard have thyroid problems, I, I was stunned. This is important information. If we're going to be healthy, we definitely have to look a lot closer to what's going on. And there, there, there's different ways you can get this iodine. I won't get through it. You'll get these links if you're interested. And you can go through and watch, uh, look at this and start to think uh, clearly about what goes on here. There's, um, it affects this iodine helps, uh, I guess I could say helps, uh, or interacts with the, with the functions of, of even hormonal, uh, uh, hormonal adjust, uh, conditions. It becomes a, a focal point, a vast focal, I mean a concise focal point. To start looking at, if we're only getting trace amounts as given by the United States federal government, we're not doing ourselves any good. When you realize what it takes to be fully sufficient to counteract radiation, which we can see is everywhere. Now, I've told you this from 2011. I told you it was everywhere. I gave all the proof if anybody was listening, that you would be bringing up the best you can the iodine levels. The, the point that I started to see is, well, what has become so fully sufficient? And then I started to see this other thing that follows along, and it brings up now this fluoride thing. Fluoride issue comes integral with this. Uh, iodine is integral to health. It regulates the flow of energy in the body. Energy, folks, is very important to listen to how this thing is rolled out. This is consistent through lots of tests, I mean lots of articles. So I'll just read the, the highlights here. You can focus in. It restores the heat of metabolism. Iodine is a natural antibiotic, antiviral, and antifungal. It detoxifies by displacing toxic halogens, bromine, fluoride and chlorine. Oxidized iodine triggers cell aptosis and a, or programmed cell death to allow the body to clean itself naturally. Iodine is a trace element with power, no doubt. Uh, so that's, uh, you look and see, also it integrates here with a, a selenium, which is a good thing to get rid of mercury. It binds up with mercury. They say there's not a lot of ways to get rid of some of this stuff. Uh, iodine is a, is a key player in moving this through, and it ties in with other uh, chemicals, elements, that are in the, in the family that do this kind of thing. And interestingly, it does it in the body. It does it inside when you give it enough. Well, what's, what's it becomes enough? What's the sources? Well, you could do the potassium iodide, and then they got seaweed. I used to do seaweed quite a bit uh, to, uh, for the purposes of the mineralization and to bring the iodine up. And uh, I've kind of fallen off a little bit. Uh, and I'm more reading this. I think I'm going to go back uh, to what I, my my intuition and my my in, well things came to me. I told you I lost all my memory. What came to me first was a lot of healthy thing, healthy information. I, I've kind of walked a little bit of, away from that, although not so much. I'm going to probably go back into maybe looking at this closer. But I was doing lots of seaweed. Why? Because it's a good source of iodine. I found another article that explains uh, explains this for you. And it, it was interesting to look at the corollary that uh, someone who was looking at it for themselves and how much do they take, they went through and what's in seaweed? How much is in seaweed? And they found out for themselves that they needed a whole lot more than mic the 150 micrograms. At minimum, they would they could feel a difference at 700 to 1,000 micrograms or 1 milligram, which is interesting because the doctor says that you're not really seeing any effect, actual effect in being sufficient until you raise those milli go up to milligrams, not micrograms. And so we see where they where we're told to be and where we keep ourselves is nowhere near what we need to in order to keep ourselves healthy and away from what we hear are common uh, problems in society. We have cancers and 
you know, breast cancers and thyroid problems, all this, all these other problems that iodine is critical to. And so we find out right in this one article that 700 milligrams a day is about all you're going to get in your food at best if you eat enough sushi. And they tell you how much sushi. And I'm looking at well, what are or um, iodine wraps, um, iodine wraps, you know, seaweed wraps, and uh, you find out well it's still way less than what the doctors say. Well, what what do the doctors say? Well, the doctors and I ran across this is a consistency, and I got to be careful. The internet's kind of a good copy and paste, so you got to kind of look careful. And at some point, we got to found some some hopefully source documents. Uh, they're a start for those of you that want to bring up your health. And then, as I saw it, be, with this fluoride inclu inclusion, you have another weapon to bring toward uh, a, a jurisdiction, cities, counties, whatever, whoever has the control of the water treatment plants to either end fluoride because it admits it's a toxic. You already heard it. The doctors are saying it's a toxic substance but also offer a solution if you're going to continue, then you're also going to have to stop the harm you're doing through the fluoridization process by providing sufficient iodine. Now, what is that? Dr. Michael Schenkter says, and this is only a paragraph in a larger document, uh, the quote, the treatment dose when a person is iodine insufficient, remember, one doctor I'll get to here in a second, says 94% of the people he saw in his clinic were insufficient. And this is where he found a problem. He says he was afraid to go uh, micrograms, above micrograms, and he found out that didn't do anything. He went to six milligrams. He found out over three months that didn't do anything. And he finds out that you have to go up to 50 milligrams. And, in, and here's the point. In 50 milligrams, over six months, you start to become fully sufficient. And so let's get back quickly. So Flukazilla attacking the West Coast when when the alternative people were selling potassium iodide for big money, wasn't going to save you, is the point. You have to maintain a, no, you have to maintain a nutritious diet or supplementing yourself. And we have to supplement because apparently something happened after the 30s that our, our, our agriculture, we'll let you all find that out, find that out it did, became, uh, nutrition, be, nutrients became deficient. And we are having almost a supplement. Now this becomes a problem of of a, of, a, of, a, of assimilation, and also becomes a, a problem of then you know, what do you put together? This is a whole other study, and I can't go through all that, or even part of what I understand there. You just have to go find out about it. But the 12 milligrams, you're insufficient. You have to go 12 milligrams. It's between 12 milligrams and 50 milligrams a day, not micrograms. Preliminary research indicates that if a person is iodine insufficient, it takes about three months to become iodine sufficient while ingesting a dose of 50 milligrams of iodine daily and a year to achieve, a year, folks, a year to achieve that while ingesting a dosage of 12.5 milligrams iodine daily. Says that if the Fukuzilla is attacking you, you're not, and you don't have, and you are just a normal population, you cannot get protected in time. All the money you would have spent, all the worry you did uh, about not having potassium or not or trying to get it, and all the money you spent or whatever was fruitless because you weren't maintaining your health. You weren't giving your body a sufficient amount. And again, we'll get to the there's there's side effects to some of this, but because of this insufficiencies in our bodies and trying to get sufficient. You have to understand what those are. Don't ever disregard that. Some people can tolerate it better than others, like everything. The point is, is that when they're telling us micrograms, and then they say they tell you that you've got a radiation source that's coming to hurt you, your potassium iodine is not like an aspirin. It doesn't fill up overnight. In fact, you'll read more here. Your supplementation is excreted almost at 50%. And so that's the problem. The doctor looking into this said, well, I'm giving small amounts. It's not really doing anything. We have to have sufficient amounts. And so this is what these, I gave a link here. They go through a whole list. In fact, I was surprised a little bit. Not so much. I don't know the gentleman. But uh, they were actually criticizing Dr. Mercola, who said there's a limit of 400 micrograms. And they said I, they don't understand how he could say that when, in fact, you look at the, stu the studies that have been done, and you definitely need milligrams. This, this is up on the par, up on par with any probably any other any other basic nutrient. It's uh, it's that much. 
Now, this other gentleman, uh, another doctor here, uh, who is also cited in these other studies, this list of studies, of paragraphs of studies that are trying to tell you about what people have found about iodine, now moves us into that it's important that what they're telling us is not sufficient, that minimal amounts won't be helpful, that it takes a long time to get yourself up to the, to the point when your body is sufficiently stored, and, and if you start thinking about it, it's not just one little organ, it's every cell of the body. It's going through the processes of the, of the body. It's going through multiple organs in the body, not just the cells as well. And again, my mind started to go, there's lots to say here, uh, and I don't want to get too far off because there's so much to understand. It's just, it's pervasive, it's, it's conditioned in our body. Let, let me just go through... Uh, just a list of things treated, and then I'm going to go to the fluoride because this is the importance of the solution. You, uh, not Lugol's solution here, but the uh, the source of iodine, uh, one of the sources of iodine, but a solution against fluoridation. The conditions that are treated with iodine, I should go here quickly now that I see the chart. In this next document written by a, a doctor, let me see if I can find who this was. I don't remember all these people. Brown, Brownstein, Dr. David Brownstein. Now again, you have to go research this and find the veracity of all this. I found the consistencies of these to be a good place to start, but he's got a table. Conditions treated with iodine as he has found. And I think he looked at this over two years before he wrote this in 2005, I believe, if I got the date right. Breast disease, diabetes, fatigue, hemorrhoids, infections, keloids, ovarian cysts, Pironi's disease, Deputrin's contracture. Excess mucus production, headaches and migraine headaches. Poro, any, folks, anytime you, you don't have, you know, if you have one of these, consider it, what, what the cause might be. Parotid, and then also when I have, uh, like, migraines, I used to have migraines and, and headaches, and I found some stuff that seems to have gotten rid of them since. I haven't had any since then. And you go look at what you're eating, and you find out that... Uh, Iodine was one of the things that was being brought in that apparently I was deficient in. I don't know if it was the, if it fixed it, but it certainly must have helped because here it is. He found that it helps headaches and migraines. Who doesn't have a headache and a migraine? A parotid, uh, well, I don't know so much anymore. Have migraines. A parotid duct stones, fibrocystic breasts, thyroid disorders, vaginal infections, and sebaceous cysts. It's quite a list of things to be keeping track of uh, for one little element. And this doctor says here, uh, which moved me into the fluoridation condition, again, how we look at this is notice. We, we find out that it's not sufficient. We can't, we can't, we aren't getting our intakes. Uh, the radiation that they can't deal with is everywhere. They've been diluting this stuff in the oceans for quite a long time. Uh, the, uh, what, and what, and in my view, what can we do about some of this, if anything? And how do we balance our own risk? Uh, this doctor says, I concluded that the toxicity of modern life must be impacting iodine levels. Now remember, let me interject here. Remember he said iodine uh, replaces these other things. No different than iodine fills up in the thyroid so that the iodine coming in that's radioactive cannot come in. It fills the reservoir. It can be displaced. And so you have to, it's, it's a, if you will, a battle. You've got to keep the supplement coming in order to keep the body full. And if it's not, it, it's susceptible to harm. Uh, he, I concluded the toxicity of modern life must be impacting levels. It is well known, and this is a, here's a doctor's assertion, for those of you in fluorides and fluoridation, and wanting to do something about locally, they admit the doctors know, that it is known that the halides, of which iodine is, the same family, it's interesting as well, the halides, fluoride and bromide, having a similar structure as iodine, can competitively inhibit iodine absorption and binding in the body. And so if they look similar, the body will take them in. Uh, if the, the body does, the thyroid does the same thing, it doesn't matter. The, the body doesn't see radiation. It just sees the molecule. It just sees the, the, the structure of the, of the element. And so my, my takeaway on this, and there's more to read. This is the study that started to lock it all in, what was done, who, how it works out, what those, why it takes so long, 
that you don't get it like you don't get iodine like a like an aspirin. That these stories that you hear uh, the, the tra trauma-based uh, programming for Fukuzilla going to attack you because they're going to dump a, a couple million tons of water uh, liquid into the ocean. And remember, they want millions of tons, not gallons. You know, you, water is like eight pounds to the gallon. Uh, so you can divide by eight. That number would be smaller. So that's all again trauma-based. Make the bigger numbers. Make the numbers bigger. It scare you, but uh, you can stay scared and you can be affected. So you might be affected, some of you, but you can limit that interference with your body from any radiation source if you understand that uh, there are contaminants that are displacing it. If you're taking fluoride in the water, those of you that are doing this. And it's displacing the minimal iodine that you have, or you do have hardly any iodine at all, likely not, is where you, I, my mind focuses in on an attack against jurisdictions that would cause fluoridation of water. Not only are they displacing the iodine you need for health, it also can be shown to be a toxin. And this doctor, if you didn't have any other testing, this doctor says it's known. Well, that just tells me there's going to be a lot more red documentation I can get for my files to walk in and instruct a local decision maker whether or uh, on whether find out whether or not they know uh, make friends if you will enter in and say well I've got some information about how bad fluoride is and I really once you see this I think you might reconsider fluoridate, fluoridating the water and maybe going to something else and then you maybe research that field so that you know what to offer instead and that's that's a big balance thing but this doctor says that fluoride is a toxin. So if you didn't know anything else, which some of you who are in it, that's why you're even focused on fluoridation, uh, or any other way things. I mean, there's a chromium-6 as well, even though that's natural. There's all kinds of these things that may be there that, as I've showed you, the, the federal government will not look at. And they have their, their reason, and one of the reasons is impossibility to deal with. See, So that's how you see them. They're discharging all this stuff. It's all consistent with how they're responding. Why I took an interest in it. What's so important they're having to discharge the effluent is means that there's an impossibility. They've decided there's an impossibility that cannot be dealt with. What is that? That's the real the thing they're not talking about. I tell you, the silence is what you've got to focus on. And it, it brought up the 129. We're now into a doctor's discussion. But this, these uh, fluorides are toxic, and they displace immune provide immune system health providing iodine. And so this is where I got to thinking about about uh, anybody else. I mean, anybody that's in fluoridation, fluoridate, um, against fluoridation of water, you can offer now, not only is this fluoride bad, it's toxic. Doctors know that. Why did you, you know, the, don't know that you had the right to put this in the water system. It also displaces iodine, which we need. And you're likely causing a bunch of these other, what, all these conditions that are treated by iodine. And you present that to that information in a small group. You don't get overwhelm anybody because no one knows this stuff. A lot of people don't know this. Likely they don't. They're just taking the lead of their water system. I've got a little bit of experience of that in the capacity of a budget committee chairman looking at the costs of government in a small city. A backwoods city, nothing. It was real simple, small place. I got to look at some of this. And you get to speak to it this way as well. you got to try to change your attitude uh, about... Uh, how how bad it is you got to kind of work with people and their and their sensibilities but you you bring some knowledge you say look at the here's a doctor saying and you maybe back this up with a couple more studies but you say here's a doctor that says that this fluoride is toxic here's it displaces iodine uh, we have minimal iodine the RDA is only is only 150 micrograms we need milligrams and this is what the fluoridation of water is causing is a much better presentation, I think, to someone who has a decision to make, uh, maybe private and quiet first, but then to walk in and scream and yell about how much the fluoridation has to stop because it's killing our kids. And there's other things that iodine is helping in the growth. So bring the more scientific view, bring the doc the opinions that are not yours, and you can then counter, well, what do you do? Well, you find maybe other things they can do, but, and then as I was saying, you could actually maybe have the, if they're going to have to flor fluoridate water, they're going to have to also provide, uh, my suggestion, and this would kind of kick them over into stop fluoridating, they're going to have to provide for sodium, uh, for um, iodine supplementation so that the fluoride doesn't hurt people and cause these harms that are treated by iodine. 
Okay, so I just now, if those of you wanting to do something, in the last 10, 15 minutes, I've explained how you take these documents, these studies, this notices to us, and you put them together in a presentation relative to this to go after a subject matter. So those of, again, it's, I do this over a different, I don't quite do it like a class, but if you listen to the last 15 or 20 minutes, you cut out everything about the Fukuzilla, but you put in the presentation against the problem of fluoridation and it's no good for you, and you look at the notice and the words and the knowledge that's already out there, and then go present that in an application in the intention to, all, to take away something that's now shown toxic, harmful, and the causes. And then you hopefully provide a couple of solutions that are more, more rational, more realistic. You're likely going to do much better at getting, well, them to stop it, but more importantly, maybe even put out for people that the government, if it's going to start p pretending to provide for people, it's going to have to, pre it's going to have to start providing re realistic things. Now, where the, where the documentation is, the minimum is 150 micrograms, but when, Health is re is aided by 12.5 milligrams. You have a position to make that I don't think the government would take on to to pay for everybody, and they would just stop fluoridating because now you've exposed what they didn't know before. What I tell you, you bring you know, talk about alternative dispute resolution. You do, you bring an alternative destruction. That, that you bring that their alternative to fluoride is a destruction. Your alternative is to stop that destruction that they may or may not have known. And I would err on the side of ignorance. But why? Because you don't, you don't push up against anybody initially. You're just there to say there was a decision made to fluoridate. Uh, and we now see this doctor shows that the fluoride is removing iodine. The removal of iodine or displacement of iodine is causing these symptoms in our society. You may want to go, you want to get it really become an overachiever. Go find the statistics on those, on those if you can on all that harm that the potentially are being caused by fluoridation. You're going to have a much better argument, I think. Now, for, let's get to Fukuzilla. Those of you that are afraid of it, you are now know, knowing that your iodine levels are so low uh, and they are not treated like an aspirin that you had better, if you're really interested, you're going to have to focus in on your health and do at least this much relative to the iodine. You have to find out for you What's going to work? You have to take responsibility. You take your, move your fear into action. And uh, it seems to me, when you read more about this, the iodine, uh, uh, given that it's also, every iodine goes through is 50% excreted immediately, uh, it's part of a pro potential problem there, but you realize you're only half susceptible to whatever you're going to take in that, that's in Mother Nature or man-made. We move away from the fear and we start saying, well, I'm as fortified against this as I possibly can. In the meantime, boy, I mean, the way I saw other things, you'd be thinking better, you'd be feeling better, you won't, you won't have the problems that you have. Uh, the, 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 just this one report here, there's a, um, anecdotal statement about uh, Betty, and Betty, uh, Betty is uh, feeling pretty good, even, with, even without the song. And so, you see, distinct uh, dis a distinct problem in what is reality versus what the government tries to get away with. What is reality versus what people try to infest your mind with. What is reality versus what people try to sell you thinking while well, you think you're going to save yourself. It was really a shock to me to find out I didn't realize that the body does not take iodine in very quickly at all. And it takes a, a consistent, over time, you have to be, well, daily. At 12.5 milligrams, I was shocked how much that was relative to what we're told. I, I've always thought more, but I didn't realize that much more. And that's to maintain once you are sufficient. And sufficient blocks radiation relative to your thyroid intake and your organs. So while they're also saying iodine is only in the thyroid, they've got, a, well, particular for the women, because this is the this is the, the physiology of a woman here the, that's being affected, that you're being misinformed of what, what is required to help protect you. 
from the very things the government gives license to doctors to exploit you. you know, do I have a proof that going into that is going to stop all that? Absolutely not. But when I see what I've read over the last and spent enough time here an hour talking about what, what seems to be important to us and how the, we're trauma-based always and we tend to get locked into that, breads and circuses, and that even our knowledge of, about, for me, even as much as I've researched, I did not know how little we are actually for to, uh, have in our body re relative to iodine. And then relative to the people prior to the 1930s, it's astonishing. And we look at the problems that it come, people's health problems that come from that time and now. And it starts to put two and two together, I hope. Enough that gets you interested. If you're not interested, if you're not interested in anything else, I'd say it may be interesting. May give yourself interest in in something about your health. Again, if we don't have our health anyway, it doesn't matter. We're not focused on anything outside of us because we're all like inwardly turned. There's no way to to stop that. When you're not feeling good, you're not you're not paying attention. Well, to the pain, and we can avoid a lot of that. Not it's not a cure all, but. When we're deficient in this, and I'm thinking, how much more are we deficient in? How many more things do I look at, try to be sufficient on my own, try to bring things that work for me, and I see effect from, don't go lost in the in the hype. How much do I do that I see a little bit of a turn like this? You'll see a little bit of a turn. People see a difference at 700 micrograms. They could see a difference, but finding out that's still completely inadequate because you need 12 point about 5 milligrams, not 700 micrograms, which is just 1 gram if you get to 1,000. And so you start seeing that the information we're fed isn't enough if we accept it on face value to even protect us, even if we thought we were doing better. And this is what it got to me, is I'm saying, okay, I'm looking at all, trying to up, I know the RDAs are, are much um, lower than they need to be. I know that. But it's, it takes quite a study to find out what is the actual, what is your actual intake needs. And it's uh, not, not a, you can start to think about pretty easily, easily that our food system and the nutrition in our food, if it's admitted, you see the charts here, you see in the discussion of the doctors, since the 30s it's been knocked down, that there's just no way we can get the kind of nutrition from our food even. Forget the GMOs and all that. I'm talking about the, there's no minerals in the ground. And so it brings up, what else can we do? And so uh, we have to start looking at supplementation. Actually, when they looked at, what about seaweed? Well, if you don't, I don't know if you want to take that seaweed from the, from the Irish Sea. Maybe you can, I don't know. But uh, maybe, but be careful, those of you that think you're getting it from away from Fukuzilla. But is seaweed better? Well, if you look at that article on the seaweed, Maybe not. When you look at what the doctors are saying, even uh, elemental tablets of potassium iodide actually give you more and more concentrated at, at, at the levels you need. In other words, when you find out what the woman was uh, looking at, well, I need, I'm going to eat seaweed and how much it, how much it took. How many, you want to eat 50 sushi rolls, I guess, to get enough. I, I guess that's cool. You want to do that every day. And so, uh, again, I spent a whole lot more time here, but I, this is, became so important. I hear so many women having so many problems, and guys too, but I mean, this is a really sport. What I found was speaking more to the women's uh, bodies uh, that, man, I can't even imagine how much better y'all would feel if this immune system thing was working out. And for the guys, same thing. We're, we're deficient as much. Maybe we have, we don't process it the same or something. I don't know. I don't, I, I didn't look deeply enough to find out, but. To also find out that the hal other halides are displacing what we're not getting. What we're not getting. And we have an ability to get. I said, we have an ability to look at these notices and say, we can fix some of this for ourselves. At least bring a marked measure more that doesn't, uh, that we don't fall victim uh, to authoritat. Experts say, 
And I guess just I just sat rested there for a second. Just the shock of just seeing it confirmed. Yes, this stuff is in the water. It's been dumped in the water since 2011. No one said anybody. No, everyone's been crickets to that one. But boy, they sure focus on Fukuzilla. And the system is going to traumatize you again. But Fukuzilla all the time, uh, they're dumping the stuff into the uh, into the Irish Sea. And it's all over the place, folks. This is the whole problem I've been telling you. It's on the land too. It's not just in the ocean. And all the while, the the government's underwriting a minimum amount when we need thousands and thousands of times more uh, nutrition in our diets that we can't get from food. Maybe a little. There's actually a statement in one of the documents I read that organic food actually uptakes, uh, has more mineral nu minerals in the food, which is it's that's not accepted by uh, many establishment people. I agree with that in that, that someone, the organic isn't the fact that you're not using pesticides. It's that the organic has to do with a wholesome use of the land and a respect for its integrity. And that's where you maintain, you get this idea about rotating crops, leaving it fallow for a while, replace the stuff you're pulling out, let the natural soil, the soil be natural. You start getting into things, you start listening more closely to someone like Paul Stamets that says, make sure you got some uh, fungus running in there, the mycilla, the mushrooms, the right ones running through there to help. And when you start running more wholesome with the land, you're going to start getting the nutrition back that I think has been exhausted uh, by methods that were started after the administrative 30s as a thought. Until then, uh, it looks like, uh, research this for yourself if you're interested. You want to maybe bring yourself into health and re restore yourself. There's also a way you're, it restores you if you've been deficient. Again, the body's an amazing, amazing mechanism, amazing creation. The way it works, and uh, you can bring this up, and I, uh, I looked real quickly and finally found it was a little bit difficult. A lot of the uh, snake oil tabletizers want to, expensive tabletizers want to sell, but I was looking for bulk, and it's not powder. It's a crystal, but you could get something pretty, it seemed relatively inexpensive for what was uh, given to you, I think 100 grams in a bottle, and I think it was 20 bucks instead of a 14 tablet for 25. And so you, you, could, you need to look very carefully at what this is doing, and I, I found this to be so, because of the trauma-based programming, and they did it again, they did it at 911, they keep do doing this stuff to people. It made the news, I didn't understand why it made the news, is why I started to look at it, why is this making such a big splash and it's just the promotion. And what is being hidden by all this is really fascinating. But looking through it, I feel much better about understanding that there's more to do and that we have something that we can do. And this extends back over, as I keep saying, you can take this and we can actually put this in the administrative processes that I that I uh, tell you can be applied to things that you that are just insanity that are being done against us. And uh, we, I kind of focused on fluoridation, but that goes on anything else that the system, the government does that, under the color of protecting protecting you. If you don't come that way, I, I don't think you have a chance. And I say that because of the methodology that's been put in place. If you do show up in the way I'm saying, you have a much better, uh, more than a chance. I, because of what we do, I mean, it just changes everything. It just absolutely changes everything because it's like you bring the reality. As I say, one commissioner and the law is the majority. Because what you expose, if the other two commissioners, which are supposed to be a majority, that were a counter to the law, you expose them to be wrong in the law. And no, most people openly declare they're wrong in the law. Well, they, they also don't want to declare they're wrong in reality. And any more, reality is a little bit more difficult to sell. But you can bring it the way I've been suggesting to you. And this is what I found as I was reading through all this. I have three or four different things running in my mind, how I'm pulling this, the information together, what's being brought out from the information that I thought was very important for you to know today. And if you don't stand up for yourself, apparently no one, well, no one else will, and then you can be exploited in your ignorance. How many people would have really bought tablets uh, had they known that, but when Fukuzilla, the plume of Fukuzilla hit them in, in the face, within days, I would, would have bought those iodine tablets uh, thinking that it was going to help them. I, I don't even know that. I just know that I think if you knew that it wasn't going to help you, you'd almost feel more doomed, wouldn't you? Well, maybe we would have got to the point, well, what would it take? 
we need to be, why don't we have enough? And how are we going to get enough? And so all of you all that bought those tablets or thought it would or got fearful and, you know, Spookazilla was attacking, if it really did, which it didn't, but if it really did, you were affected. Why? Because there wasn't enough things you could do timely enough. You're supposed to do that every day. And I guess that's the other discipline. you got to be healthy every day. And I guess that's my focus on some of this. We're really not, for as much as I, I'm not so knowledgeable, but I not, don't know nothing. I know something. And to see how little I knew regarding iodine and its uptake and its actual effects, even though I have a sense it was, it's been important, I, I focus a bit on it. It was a really, a really an interesting uh, look uh, for this. So, uh, that's a, hopefully you'll find merit. I hope, hopefully you'll find how I, you'll understand what I said, how you take the notice, these studies, how you package, if you say package them, to present in a, a concise, summary way. You take little paragraphs and you can pull out, like I was saying, you pull out the paragraph, you put the chart, it's only a small little paragraph, you put that on a piece of paper, you walk into a seated decision, someone has a seated decision, and you make a conversation with them before you make it, before you make it public. You try to get a rapport with somebody, find someone that can make a decision uh, to, uh, to look at what you have, entice them and induce them to be interested. And if they won't go that way, or you can't find anybody, then you turn the, then you ramp it up. Then you start showing, then you have to make a more bigger cause, and you go public. That's you show up in the meeting and you make a statement up front that says, I came to you, I came to you, I came to you. With this information, you summarize it. You only got three minutes anyway. You summarize it so you can speak within two and a half minutes, and then you get it on the open record that these people have been told the damages that they're causing to people in the public. And I, again, the, what I tell you behind the woodshed is how we approach our problems to resolve them, not to not to become the protester. And, and and people want to be the protester, and that's a problem. <laughs> but again, I, I don't know what to say. It's just not. It's not. We don't function right now as the protester. We we function better, like I've been suggesting. You bring a better reality and a better offer of a less harmful. Uh, way to do things, and if you keep in mind this risk management concept, you'll realize, um, I think, better how to approach that. So if you don't protect yourself, no one else will. If you don't work to protect uh, yourself, it's coming to you. Who else will? Nobody will. That's why you see nothing happening. That's why you see also when you yell and scream and don't do it quite right, it just keeps becoming a noise that never gets resolved either. And sometimes the, the uh, gener uh, jurisdiction will hit you straight in the face, and you're, 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 you have to defend yourself. And we see a little bit of that. I talked about this. I think it was la I think it was last week, where San Francisco, the government of San Francisco, went after an association, a government, a corporation, and uh, declared them to be a domestic terrorist organization. And this is um, kind of what they do to people. They have an opinion that. Uh, they want to run on their emotions, like with anti-vax. They give you a title, you're done. And that's why I say you don't want to take on titles either. Allow them anti-vax or whatever, anti-fluoridation or anti-anti anti clean water or whatever. They want to put a title on you to, to subvert you. Uh, this is what the San Francisco did to the NRA, and so the NRA was directly attacked, and they've apparently now su are suing the San Francisco over the declaration. And it was filed already in the District Court of North, uh, Northern District of California and accuses the city officials of violating gun lobby free speech rights for political reasons and says the city is seeking to blacklist anyone associated with the NRA. It asks the court to step in, quote, to instruct elected officials that freedom of speech means you cannot silence or punish those with whom you disagree. That sounds like an equity action and uh, maybe not def defamation. I haven't seen the case, but it did remind me, I forgot to tell you, I think those of you that are in San Francisco that are members of the NRA, you, you actually may do a counter move, move on this. You should all send a letter to the city saying, well, now that I'm going to, uh, you've declared me in a domestic terrorist organization, uh, you can't take my money. Otherwise, you would be, you can't take my tax money. Uh, you would be supporting a, ta a terrorist. And so I think, uh, and, and other thoughts, you know, come to mind last week. It didn't come to me right now, but I, I didn't, I wanted to tell you that once they made you all a uh, domestic terrorist, you, you just, Focus on them and just say, we don't owe you anything now. Taxes, money, servitudes, nothing. And then see where that goes. And I say that because we need an evolutionary engagement. Where it's going to take you, I can't tell you. It all depends on how creative you become and 
in reality of how that affected you and how what they're actually declaring against you and what that where that places them relative to what they can ask you for. To me, that was in my mind. I, my mind went in to say, well, well, that's good. That kicked me right out of that system, didn't it? And it's a, a defamation. So let them try and pull me back in. Okay, so I just, again, I just said, offered something. Those of you there or anywhere that does this and you want to exploit that, uh, do it. If Why not? I mean, uh, to me, that seems to be the way we're going to extricate ourselves from the nonsense. That whether Whatever you want to put a title on it, whatever it's, uh, status terminology you want to put it, whatever, whatever you want to say it is, this is a way to cut ourselves free of those that are in the seats of decision that are being uh, criminals. And uh, it's okay if they want to call me a, a domestic terrorist. It isn't right. It's a defamation. But that means that I don't have to give them any more. I have no allegiance to that, and they proved it. You can take that that lead every, anywhere you want. It goes to, that kind of a lead goes in lots of places. Again, it's how I it's how I think you have to start thinking. Whether how it goes, I don't know. What you're going to see, I don't know. But it certainly puts it on the map. It certainly makes it a, a, a response that they uh, vilified, and you just run behind the fact of what NRI just try, tried to protect themselves and their members. You go ahead and, and plant your flag of, of, of difference against their declared termination. How in the heck are they going to receive money from you being declared a terrorist if they're not aiding and abetting, uh, being aided and abetted by the terrorists or aiding and abetting a terrorist to keep them going? See, the taxes, it makes you get, uh, supposed to keep you going. Isn't it? <laughs> your licenses, your, your reason for being in a system like that? At any rate, let you guys think about that. Open your mind on the evolutionary part of this and engage them in a different way. Just hit them sideways. Slap them upside their head, right? Take them behind the woodshed. That's what this is all about. So you have to protect yourself because nobody else will. NRI is going to step up. Don't know what their suit's about. I looked inside their stuff and said, well, this is kind of interesting. Uh, what if we just took uh, accepted that uh, that title? Go ahead and accept it. It's not true. But we'll accept it for the purposes of countering any demand that that jurisdiction has. And then my thought was, well, how do they get it back? Wow, isn't that kind of cool? And this is what I try to say. Don't take on title. Don't put yourself in a space where you're all too possessive of things. And you'll, you'll probably move a lot faster, freer, and certainly off, off of whatever, whatever predisposed ideas someone's going to try and have to come against you. Anyway, they called them a name. Now they're going to get called out for that, and now you can exploit that point. Uh, moving on here, they don't look out for you, and then they make accidents and st they make mistakes and accidents, and we have it now uh, that the, we proceed uh, like an ongoing uh, an ongoing automobile crash, like this perpetual airplane crash that goes on, the perpetual ship grounding that goes on in our society. International science team claims they found effective HIV countermeasure by accident. And all I want to do here is point out this is our it's our our science. This is how we so called science. This is how we move along. We're we're fumbling along. We do things more by accident. My problem is that's how they impose things on you. This is how the whole system kind of functions. So if we can look and show that they do, they found supposedly an effective HIV countermeasure, which has its own story and fraud behind it. But notwithstanding that, that we find out that an international science team did this as an accident, not a not a focused thought, critical thinking direction, a hypothesis theory, a hypothesis whatever, a hypothesis theory, and then a proof. No, no, I just happened to notice. We better save our tail on our research that hasn't gone nowhere. And, I, oh, I happen to notice this will do that. Is the state of our science, which is the state of the science that puts these restrictions on us, on what they tell us is the minimum dailies for iodine, if you will. What, what they can or can't do with the, the radioactive part. What they'll tell us for our nutrition. What they'll actually impose as our so-called health care is all an accident. It's an ongoing accident. We just uh, here now see it. It's international how they do this. International, folks. You understand the scope of this this bumblehood. You live in the hood, the bumblehood. 
I, I don't even know what what to say about this. It's been uh, my view of science. What I thought, what I was brought up to know, it was wanting to be. It's certainly not today. We saw, found, I've read the document in 1985 where the guy explains this political change. A bunch of hacks getting together to do stuff. They don't. They don't want to admit that they're, that's what they're doing. It would be all right, I guess, if they admitted it and they found everything by accident, but then they'd have to admit all their so-called hypotheses are, are failed because they're just these, no, these, 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 these fantastical fantasies. Anyway, so, okay, so they've, uh, they, remember we talked about this uh, HIV thing before. I'm going to probably bring it up here. They talked about they thought they proved it. So why wasn't that one good enough that then they've now come on with a whole team that found this answer by accident? The accident is the problem for me here with us today relative to what we're told and what we accept and how we get involved with these experts saying we have the impossible force, we're just going to have to do something. Because there's these unintended consequences. And we don't tend to look at those. And, and I'm asking you to look ahead of that, call them out, bring them to the people who are making these stupid decisions to let these things happen and shut it down. Start to shut this stuff down before it happens. Don't let it get out of hand where you're having to go fight to stop a toxin in your water like flora. Gene edited cattle. Accidents, folks? Scientists? Gene editing? Gene edited cattle have a major screw up in their DNA. This story came a little bit too, uh, too late for the last uh, program about being uh, screwed up. Uh, gene edited cattle have a major screw up in their DNA. Guess what? Shorthorn cattle aren't going to be a thing, folks. Uh, they had unintended outcomes in their genes, even though the science, the technique for the editing was perfect. They were the poster animals of the gene editing revolution, appearing in the story after story. By adding just a few letters of DNA to a genome of a dairy cattle, a U.S. startup company has devised a way to make sure animals never grew troublesome horns. To Recombinetics, the St. Paul, Minnesota gene editing company that made hornless cattle, the animals were messengers of a new era of better, faster molecular farming. Quote, this same outcome has been achieved in breeding in farmyard, uh, declared the CEO uh, Stanock in 2007. This is a precision breeding. Except, folks, it wasn't. Food and Drug Administration uh, scientists who had a closer look at the genome and sequence of, of one of the edited animals, a bull named Burry, have discovered its genome contains a stretch of bacteria DNA, including a gene conferring antibiotic resistance. Antibiotic resistance. The unintended addition of the DNA from a scientific species occurred during the gene editing process itself, the, it got, the government says. It was undetected by the government, even as it touted animals 100% bovine uh, and assailed the FDA for saying the uh, animals needed to be regulated at all. Do you hear the admission that the FDA knows that this technology is, uh, is a problem, and yet it offers and allows gene-edited organisms in our food system? Okay, so, oops, accident, it's not what they tell us. And if we're not ahead of this game and we don't jump in ahead of this uh, in, the t in the opportunity that we have, even though it's so uh, bleeding uh, uh, tedious and, and, and life-consuming as well, that's another violation you can take if you, knew, if you know where you're going with that, uh, that we need to be ahead of this a lot more strenuously. And I think like today I've, I've offered you how you go about doing that. Now we see after the fact. Oops. And this brought me up to this other thing. The researchers say that they're closer to finding a cure for HIV after using CRISPR technology to eliminate disease in live mice for the first time. But we're going to have an oops there, aren't we? No, the other people say they found, they found the, uh, the HIV. These guys, these, this team says that they have uh, on the, on the, going to use gene editing to pull that off. But then we uh, hope these, uh, this HIV doesn't have horns, folks. Because here, the, our science is unintended consequences. And and the bottom line will not look at that. That's why, again, you don't have safety as a concern relative to, like, uh, gene-edited uh, included or vac included vaccinations or those projects. And we have another evidence that's an oops. The authorita science is a bunch of, it's, we live in the bumblehood. We just bumble our way along. Uh, was that the title of the broadcast, Bumblehead? I don't know. Transgenic uh, mosquitoes 
This is I'm breaking into the broadcast. Transgenic mosquitoes pass on genes to native species. Transgenic mosquitoes released in Brazil in an effort to reduce the population of disease-bearing insects have successfully bred and passed on genes to native mosquito population. A Yale study published September 10th in the scientific reports has found. I don't need to read any more. Uh, folks, I, you heard that behind the woodshed. Life will find a way. Okay, so I don't know why these brilliant people in the, in the uh, these experts say couldn't have uh, anticipated this. But see, you'll look carefully in these stories. If you go ever go to the links and start reading, and just start reading with a one mind, not just observing, one thinking through critically, and one trying to put things together. Just read through to see. You'll you'll they'll tell you that they knew was, there was a, a a problem and that the uh, they claim it's unintended now when in fact they did. They say it's an unanticipated outcome that is concerning. Did you pick the word outcome in the last report? See, these are outcome-based. This is consensus-driven. This is that method I told you that's destroying us. You, this is how you counter that. But uh, not after the fact. You have to know it's harder after the fact. But now you have the proof it should have been. Uh, you should have. They should have not done this. It's an unanticipated outcome. Well, they were focused on an outcome. That also admits they didn't look at all outcomes, and they're supposed to. In other words, that gives you your in. You, you can bring in the outcomes they're not wanting to look at. But it was anticipated. Why? Because they had a thought it could, and they had to answer to that, didn't they? So they already knew this is complete. Uh, these people are just liars. They're like, just like the Bar Association members. Everything's turned into this nonsense. It, it, it promotes certain things that just aren't reality. And we haven't been around as a positive society to counter a lot of this. And when I started to get into this, I started seeing that there was a way to counter it. Again, I can't tell you I like any of it. It's just like drives I'm really getting tired. I mean, this is just on and on and on. It's uh, not, not really moving anywhere. Not enough people step up. Those that do, and they do it correctly, they, you all, see, those that do, you see an alteration. You see a change pretty quick. Or you see it doesn't advance any further. Or maybe not as fast as you continue to move forward. So, unanticipated outcome. Yeah, it's outcome-based, folks. They're not going to anticipate it. Why? That's alternative dispute resolution. There's only going to be one outcome. The outcome is they're going to have a mosquito in the environment. And guess what? That's okay underneath the 1992 biodiversity, I think 1992 biodiversity treaty. This is international, folks. This, this corruption is already global. You want to live under a oh, one world order, you're on it. This is it. You're seeing it. Technocracy and science, solid scientism and all this stuff. Experts say, authorita, you know, we're not in the game at all. Uh, so, I mean, my own, it doesn't really matter. They, they just admitted that that was exactly what I predicted to you. I told you behind the woodshed when, we re when I reported back here to you what was going to go on and what was going to happen. It doesn't take great intellect to figure out this stuff. And, and so you have, that's your angle in, if you need an angle. It was, they admit it's all outcome-based. It's all risk management. And if you start focusing on that, you start to understand how to defeat it. The same thing with the fire, folks. I told you about the fire policy. They're shifting. The, the people who are the policy makers are moving into risk management because they can't go on the reality. If they go on the reality, the maps show them they're wrong. If they go into risk management, that's all what? A bunch of algorithms. Just like your future life's going to be dealt with, isn't it? They can adjust this stuff. It's not reality, but they get the future they want, don't they? And you stand as crickets against it. Okay, I'm getting irritated. But anyway, keep going. The, another thing they're going to tell you, you can't that you just can't do, folks. This agenda kind of sits here all the time, this, this global agenda to run you down and take away everything that you need in your life. A chicken linked to cancer for the first time as a study connects white meat to disease. And I think this listing that I got this from was from the white privileges. So they bring on all this, this stuff. This is your white privilege. Chicken has been linked. Chicken has been linked to higher risk of getting cancer for the first time it was reported. I'll stop here because when you go in and look, and you really do have to read this stuff, they actually didn't make a causation finding. And as I read that cancer, and I've just talked to you for an hour or so about iodine, I wonder how much of that cancer was caused by def iodine deficiency. 
That's number one. Number two, if they didn't put a causation on actually white chicken meat, again, these are studies of studies of things that don't actually have reality, then what was the actual cause? What are they putting in those chickens that's causing cancer? If it is true, it's not the chicken. Matt, don't mess with a chicken. I just, don't, you're the third world country. You don't mess with their chicken. I'll just tell you that. Anyway, what is the real cause? They didn't link chicken to it. But they'll claim that they did. And they want to get you what? Uh, the future is a vegetarian future. Your, your cattle, your chattel, cattle, you're going to eat grass. Not smoke it, eat it. You're going to be do, give, you're going to be given and husbanded and, and, and medicined up the way, the future they want. Okay, so right now they went from red meat, now they're hitting chicken. They don't want you eating meat. And I can just tell you from my uh, private experience, when I tried to be a vegetarian, I, I think it almost killed me. And I went for over a year and a half trying to make it work, and nothing I did, in all my knowledge, and all trying to figure out how to be balanced in my diet would work. And the thing that uh, now my mom came into my, my, my memory one day about a year and a half later and said, why don't you just eat some chicken soup? Why don't you try some chicken soup? And boy, that was the answer. I realized I really couldn't do without chicken soup. Don't touch my chicken here. Chicken hasn't given me cancer that I know, and then I wouldn't even know it was a chicken, right? So many things go on in life. How did they figure out it was chicken? And so this is just an attack. It's a nonsense thing. It doesn't get at the real cause. And again, after looking at iodine, I wonder if that would solve, solve most of our major problems. And as I said before, like in fire policy, why don't we try the right way to apply what the policy actually says it does, and then we'll see what it doesn't do after that. And we'll deal with what it doesn't do after that. Not pre pretend that we know and cause an accident. How much harm is caused by these things that we buy into as a society is really phenomenal to me. A lot of people aren't buying into any of it, but they're not active to stop the onslaught. And that's the other problem. Just because you don't, you might hear it and you don't buy into it, even as general population, not people who are focused on doing a lot of what we do here, but on general population, it's still not going to solve the incessancy of the nonsense that be eventually becomes regulation. Right? Because they allow the harm in there, and then they look at the risk against continuing to give it to you, and, and if it's not enough to raise the, uh, well, cause the natives to get restless enough for the pitchforks and torches to come out in the proper way, they allow it to continue. You think I'm joking? You think I got this off the, oh, I'm just conspiracy theorist? No, Zantac has low levels of cancer-causing chemicals, the FDA says. Again, just reading off the headlines, folks. The chemical N, N, uh, NDMA, just to explain just one sentence, one paragraph, one sentence, is the same one found in blood pressure drug Valsartan, uh, which led a widespread red to light, widespread recalls last year. Okay, they're not going to stop this, folks, when you read the story. It's got cancer-causing contaminants. And what was interesting to me, when you look carefully, again, one or two sentences, it said that this contaminant can be from the misformulation of this drug. And that led me to believe, well, what a, maybe they're not formulating Zantac the way they said it was supposed to work, notwithstanding what it does and doesn't do. They find that the cancer-causing molecule is caused by misformulation, if you, in my word, misformulation. That, so the cancer causing may be the least of your worries, those of you that have to take this stuff. And my question is, why don't you look at, at other, why don't you eat better? Heartburn medicine, eat better. No, don't just throw a bunch of bicarbonate soda in your stomach. No, eat better. Start looking at what causes that and start eating better. And you can turn around and probably go find a natural uh, type of uh, response for yourself uh, to solve all that. Uh, for myself, a long time ago, I just started eating better, and any of these kinds of things have gone, gone. No, not lots, no, very little junk food, if I could say, I have any of it. I don't use any processing as much as possible. I mean, you, some of the stuff you can't get away from. I try to get a best uh, 
you know, say homemade stuff as possible. Don't eat out. I mean, that just relieved me of all kinds of problems, just looking and making daily, uh, doing things every day uh, to eat a little bit better and not challenge uh, challenge our systems. We we don't take responsibility for ourselves so much that this even becomes a problem. But when you look at what they're going to, uh, when they're making this stuff, they have cancer causing contaminants. The FDA is going to come to your rescue. Read the story, folks. Uh, I'll just, okay. Not likely. Just uh, spoiler alert. Oh, I did it reverse, didn't I? Yeah, not likely. Are they going to, you know, the officials that come after you when you do something or move on to from your health now moving into some other things, moving along as they move into, they want to keep track of everything that you do. They want to have a, a say in your life. Uh, they're supposed to be regulating for safety, which they're not. It's only the safety of the system that's going to continue to exploit you because you don't step up into your ignorance about, and I'm saying this to myself right now, even to what you thought you knew, that it's even more to know uh, and then more to now engage. You think knowing about deficiencies and excretions of iodine and what it can do and what it doesn't do and what it, uh, what capacity it has is doing that, folks. See, so the knowledge of it is not going to do us any good. That's why I say we've got to take the next step. And then I'm saying now you do that for yourself. Then you turn around and say, well, this water I'm drinking or this water that my family's drinking is fluoridated. That's displacing everything. I'm, I'm, I'm throwing good money after bad here just to give them a fluoridated, iodine uh, supplements because the fluoride's displacing it. i got to go stop the fluoride. It's a known toxin. I don't have to, it's not my opinion. Doctors are saying that. Where did that get lost in the conversation? We have to step up to protect ourselves because the system is coming and has always been to control and, and regulate or whatever all else we hear behind which it would say is offensive to us. Whatever title you want to put on the type of ism that you're behind. I just kind of, the presumption of innocence is something I start with, and then we'll see. We'll go on from there. And this may be, lead, I better not. Well, and this leads me on to something else, but, you know, you're, you, you're not presumed, when you get into dealing with these people, you're not presumed innocent. You're not presumed not subject. You're not presumed to not be sub, uh, exploitable. And uh, you don't take a proper approach to that. You're going to miss it. So, but California Supreme Court backs expanding access to police misconduct cases. Is something that uh, they're not going to stop the misconduct, but in California at least, and to the limit that, that they'll, they'll fight, that the system itself will fight this, you're going to have better access to the, hist uh, de uh, de uh, the, the just deputy's history uh, of misconduct in, in criminal cases. Maybe not in civil cases, but it, at least to, to testify in criminal cases. So they're not going to stop the harm. No, they're going to give you the access to go and get beat down in their system in order to get uh, to get it, uh, to get the information. And at least you're getting the information, right? I mean, this is the whole the, the whole advantage to this this decision. This is disclosure, isn't it? Isn't this the same disclosure I've been telling you need to ask about vaccines? In the same disclosure I'm now saying here today and impliedly about what the real problem with uh, Fukushima is, and maybe we have to look at how we can fortify ourselves and the standards that have been given to us in this modern world that is filled with radiation is not sufficient as the official guideline. And that you then, for those of you that are, see, I have a problem with getting some of these. We are not able to get some of these supplements so easy sometimes. Then you can turn that as an obligation for them to not block the remedy, too, can't you? See, this is the same kind of attack I just told you about the fluoride. Well, if you're going to do fluoride, then maybe you're going to have to also, not maybe, you're going to have to provide people with iodine. Not for radiation, but because it brings them into a state that they're susceptible to a multitude of health harms. So if you make a decision, it's the same thing way work, they work. Uh, you, you put an obligation, you have to have a remedy, right? If you're going to put an obligation of, of, of ill health, you're going to have to at least help me to fortify my health. You can't uh, do this uh, to me and my, my, my little ones, my, my family. And it becomes the rest of your society. We, we have to... The state must disclose. This is about disclosure. Why is this a question that the Supreme Court in any state has to say that? Is your problem. The military sense of this does not want you to know about what's going on. They had to be forced. There is this so-called law running, but they had to be told. This is not 
your rights in the first instance, which I tell you is how you get at and around the administrative uh, harms that they put on us. Even in an investigatory stop that I saw we were talking about, I think it was last week. Did I think about that? I didn't say it earlier. Sound minds, thank you for simulcasting as you have and your discussion there and all the people there. Really appreciate it. I uh, hope you all found the document and you looked at it and you started to understand more of what I said. I left out a whole lot. Uh, but anyway, any rate, there's a ways to approach all this, folks. So to me, you know, just sitting here, just, uh, in a way, I'm partly excited because it gives us an avenue of real, tangible uh, uh, remedy against this uh, oppression and occupation and uh, uh, just a violation to us. It really, wa really wasn't supposed to be, and it is because we didn't keep that republic. In other words, we didn't keep our sense, uh, our own societal health, our own, our own systemic health. We let others pull us off of this knowledge, and it's a generational uh, encroachment by the incremental dissolving of your knowledge and your lack of ability to innately understand you. And so I, I say that because part of my view, when I lost my memory and I had to, and I was gaining, I mean, what's, what's this world about here, uh, was I, I turned inward to a more natural sense, and it, it was a different direction. It gave me different things to look at. I approach things with a different thought. And now it's been modified, and it's been kind of maybe a little bit covered over, but it still sits and rests underneath the skin of this more mechanical people hurting people society that we have. Uh, and then the exploitation and how to, to deal with that. So anyway, you know, those of you in California, you can move this on for others. The there's Oh, they've uh, the Supreme Court has said that you have to have disclosure. Like that was supposed to be a real court case. That That happened is your problem in this society. That, that we have problems of open disclosure in any government is even notwithstanding the laws that say that you're supposed to and that they keep turning and excluding information is a real problem that uh, someone's going to have to pick up like they would anything else. Uh, why? Because this failure to disclose, uh, while they're taking on information, uh, you don't understand what they're taking on. You then are vulnerable to if you a side attack, a collateral attack against you. You don't even know where they're coming. You don't know where they're coming from, and that's a problem. You take assumptions that you know, and you don't know enough, and then they beat you down some more. In fact, I saw a video last night that that's exactly what happened. But to here, here's what the information. Huntington Park in California, new RoboCop, stores pedestrians' faces, scans, license plates, and costs $8,000 a month to run. And they're getting you, the taxpayers, to pay it. Those in San Francisco, this comes to your town. You just tell them you're a member of the IRA or agree with the NRA. You're a domestic terrorist by the city of San Francisco, and you're not going to do business with the city of San Francisco no more. And then you go sue them for doing this, and, and now we may have a, another type of case as you slap them around a little bit just to make a, have fun with causing a, a stupidity, that they're exposing a stupidity that, that they should have never, ever uh, transgressed. But Huntington Park is a RoboCop. They're going to, again, this facial scanning thing has been heavy in the news for months and months. There's more. i got gobs and gobs of tabs I never get to. Uh, but the California Police Department's highlight the ability of automated cop and to blacklist flag individuals. is like the lead sentence, the lead problem for you all. You don't know what they're doing with this information. You don't know how... The, now you see California had to make it, one state says, oh, you can have disclosure on some information. And if they say the right words, like, oh, it's state security, I haven't heard that one yet, but that's coming, I suppose. The national security through state, yeah, that's they're going to be able to lock a lot of this stuff away unless you come on the front line and start to attack this, this ability. That California Supreme Court says you have the right to, you have a, you have the right of disclosure on certain things tells you you got a problem because it's not certain other things, but that they had to say is your system does not recognize and is not intending to follow what you would think everyone wanting to live in peace would want in order to arrest excesses of authority or, ex or criminal activity under the color, which I tell you to bring forward immediately. That's Go to your state laws. You have to do this state by state. Go to your state laws and find your extortion and your coercion. And if you have one, uh, your conversion statutes. And after you are uh, interfered with a, in a, a short but sufficient matter, you bring those out and you put the guy who's who is a guy or gal who's under color of authority on the other side of the law, uh, and you put yourself on the correct side in the point of first contact, and that will go through your other hearings as well, if you 
kind of mess up and get into a hearing. You shouldn't get into a hearing if you're doing collateral attacks with that, which is a collateral remedy to attack the, the, the one who came after you under the collar, committing felony extortion, coercion, and conversion, in, uh, which are multiple felonies if you know how to go down your statute. I say pick your statutes because your statute have the elements of what you're going to perfect as you are talking in the point of first contact. You don't have that ability when RoboCop comes along to do that. Unless, I guess, you get in RoboCop's face and you start running the recorder and you start doing this against them. In that case, now you're actually gaining an advantage because if when you ever get disclosure about this stuff, then RoboCop has to go on the stand, doesn't he? So you see how you start messing with the system? The RoboCop gets on the stand and you're going to have to, he's going to have to talk about how you didn't explain that it was extortion to steal the property of your face when you didn't commit a crime. Some of this makes me laugh. I'm inside. I'm cracking up. I mean, just what is available to us? We get so serious on some of this, but some of this other stuff is like, go ahead, bring this. Thing. Go ahead, bring it on. I've, I got another toy to play with. I got nothing else better to do in my life than to be exploited anyway, to be the victim of an occupier that I couldn't I couldn't shut down uh, because I didn't know it was there or even how to do it. Maybe I can play games with this thing. But this is coming to you, folks. This is coming that you have an automated way to gather surveillance in a system that you have to go sue to get disclosure of some of that. And they make more ways, again, so we move into more surveillance powers that are coming on, and we find, looking very carefully in the story, the limitations, because at some point you might need how this limitation works, and you've got to keep track of limitations. Uh, now you'll be traveling around, and that's a panacea for the cops, and one more way to get a hold of you, especially if you, if you smoke marijuana, get ready for weed checkpoints, the marijuana breathalyzer is now reality. Ever since legalized recreational, you think that RoboCop's not going to have a, a marijuana breathalyzer on you, be operating a sidewalk without license? You think maybe that's a possibility? I don't know. Hold on. I just said it. It'll probably come up in the, you know, how his inventions work. You say something, it turns into the world. It's operating a sidewalk without a license, RoboCop says. Ever since legalized marijuana, recreational marijuana has become a reality in America, the powers that uh, be have been brainstorming new ways to, would to prosecute legal marijuana users. Obviously, driving stone is uh, is high on the list, <laughs> high on the list of no-nos. But the state police will exponentially increase now that cops will soon have marijuana breathalyzers. I'll stop here. This breathalyzer may or may not. And this is the thing about court cases. Evidence is established, the method of evidence establishment is created through case law. Uh, you can shut, if you keep running cases through that challenges the veracity of this evidence, it won't be brought in. It took a long time to bring the current alcohol uh, Dewey standards in with the breathalyzer. A lot of court cases. Uh, the same thing will happen here. If you read in this one, they have a problem with causation relative to the existence of the indication that you've been smoking. And this is going to be critical for you to focus in on. Those of you that are indulging, uh, you well, you shouldn't in a way, but uh, those of you that indulge, you're going to have to be available to challenge the veracity of a test that they actually agree they cannot tie to the causation Relative to alcohol is the other point. So I just bring this out. Expect it. They're going to be doing all kinds of stuff. All these robots going around uh, in the uniforms. Not RoboCop, but the ones that look like they're actually living. The uh, organic artificial intelligence you call cops. They're going to be running this test uh, somewhere near you or able to. And they're going to make a big lie upon you. And you're they're going to have to, you, know, you don't have to know, but you ought to know what the limitations are on this, and this is not evidence yet. And so the more cases that come through that defeat this, the more of you are out there that are rolled up in this exploitation exercise that corporate government does or the Bar Association's occupation on you does in order to make it look like they're important and that they have laws to adhere for people's security and safety. As long as you agree with that, it, well, it functions. You challenge it correctly, and it can't. This is all, uh, what I've been saying everywhere, at any place you get, you've got to challenge it correctly because if you go into what you think you knew and you didn't know enough, they beat you down. Again, I mean, it just strikes me, that video I saw last night, the guy thinking he's doing uh, subject matter jurisdiction argument and got beat down uh, <laughs> in court. Uh, didn't set it up at all to do correctly. Got stuck on somebody, probably heard somebody on, on YouTube, didn't understand what he was up against. 
Uh, but anyway, getting on back to the uh, the, the marijuana smoking, and uh, be careful when you're high because it could uh, cause you some problems. They're going to have a device that they think they can prove. Read the story, find out what the limitations are, carry that in your in your hip pocket uh, if you participate or partake. In other words, also for those of you that don't. And we don't know the testing the capacity of these tests. We know the drug tests are at least 50% wrong, if that if that good. The regular drug tests, this might not be good, and they might start collecting up people who don't partake. And so this is, again, the problem. They don't care how they collect you up as long as they get to collect you up, because then the judge will, will, will work on your ignorance of authorities and courts and all that. I told you they they don't put up with the nonsense after a while. They don't they're they're stymied by the first two or three, but after that they handle you, and then you get beat down if you don't do it correctly. And yes, there is a correct way to do it, and it's kind of the way I've been suggesting in my view of the the alternative of the collateral attack against uh, based on the crimes that you've established in the point of first contact, whether that's code enforcement, well, Merrill Vehicle Code two, cops, wherever, administrative investigations, anything. I would rather, my sense is, I'd rather do the collateral attack. I'm an act, I'm a plaintiff in that. I'm not a victim. Uh, and then I can use that to attack the victimization they put me on their paperwork. I just don't walk in and try and discuss with a judge whether or not, uh, like in the video, uh, he has jurisdiction. I'll tell you, he has jurisdiction. And if you don't know how, you're, you shouldn't be there uh, in the first place and you shouldn't be arguing uh, because there's a way to defeat that. But you got to do it kind of my way if you don't follow the collateral attack. It's the same response, but within the court case, not as an action. Uh, so I said a whole lot there. I didn't explain it. Those of you that have been studying probably followed a bit of that. i got to be careful here because it, people think that they get uh, silver bullets and shields, and, and there's none of that. These people are just criminals. But getting back to the uh, marijuana breathing, uh, smoking and stuff, and uh, being able to be tested, at least have a plausible evidence that to put forward, that's going to be your problem. Attack that. There's no validity in an evidence. Go look at how they establish what can be evidence for certain things. Go look at what it took to be, have the standards for alcohol breathalyzers, and you'll see what it requires, and you'll be able to attack the marijuana breathalyzer. I don't know that it's solvable, uh, what the problem is with the, bre with the causation. I, that's why I say attack it so that you don't have it come in, and then you're having to deal with a stupid piece of technology that just under the color of an authority to be evidence beats everybody else down some more. And speaking of being high, uh, Alberta, something I've, I've concerned myself with in the 70s, it was said that this would be coming. I've been waiting, waiting and waiting. Uh, time is so slow. Uh, Alberta mountain, uh, uh, mountain climber gets a buzz from St. Elmo's fire. And not marijuana, folks. This is a high energy uh, ionization on the top of a mountain. Uh, somebody uh, has a video here in Alberta. He reaches up in the sky, and you hear the the sizzle of the uh, of the electricity going through his uh, fingertips. I don't think you see any of it. Uh, he has some very interesting discussions on what he didn't know was going on to him. Uh, more importantly, to what my view was that it was happening. He could reach his hands up. It was so sensitive that if he reached his hands up above his head, it connected. When he brought his head head his hands down, it didn't. At one point, if you listen very carefully, you find the video, and when you listen to it, you hear a discharge goes from him to the camera operator in a quick dis snap, uh, which is this, uh, the buzz he gets is not from marijuana, it's from St. Elmo's Fire, and I've been waiting to hear these stories. I saw a Twitter go through that no one's paying attention, folks. Some of us have been paying attention since the 70s. This is supposed to be a condition relevant to the uh, environment that I've been telling you that may be part of this homogenization of the magnetic fields and allowing the charged space up in, in the air uh, to come down uh, into our lower atmosphere. This may be the evidence that that's starting to happen. I was wondering if this year we'd see more. I told you the way the patterns were. Watch out the center of the uh, the country, United States of America, would have a lot of, uh, I, and I haven't even checked, but you can tell me if I'm right or wrong, have a lot of storms and a lot, maybe thunderstorms, maybe or not, I don't know about the tornadoes, but it could, certainly, certainly could happen, uh, but they were going to have a weather on the eastern side of the Rocky Mountains, and this would have been part of that, and so I'm seeing a little bit of clear uh, here, but it's up in Alberta, so watch the latitude as well. I found this fascinating. The connection to getting a buzz in the marijuana story before, uh, I'm taking a little bit of license to connect that up. Uh, and we'll move back to where I'm going with the fact of the surveillance and these uh, Internet of Things and these 
devices that they, they claim are evidentiary that you can kill if you know how, and you keep them from being evidence. There's a, an attorney in that last story that tells you what the problems are. You've got to bring those forward, and you've got to keep them forward for those of you that get, it, that get wrapped up. I mean, this is the whole point. Most of us won't get wrapped up, but those of you that listen that do, have this in your, in your mind about how you're going to address it. It doesn't uh, answer the method methodology, but it at least give you a thought to move closer to challenging things like motion dismiss for uh, for the lack of evidence and the failure to be able to get evidence on the type of evidence they purport exists. It's not been determined in the courts to be valid, and it has to be before it can be. And so they run test cases until they finally get enough. And this is, again, the outcome-based just thus system doing what they need to do. And so they get all this information. Uh, they're getting breathalyzers. I don't doubt it's an Internet of Things uh, product. And uh, we have uh, now, uh, right out of the production of the Internet of Things, uh, Silicon Valley, no less. Uh-oh, well, I told you before, what's happened in China is already here. Uh, Silicon Valley is building a Chinese-style social credit system. Uh, it's happened, folks. I mean, now it's in the news. They're telling you it's been in place since 2004. All right, so if you didn't notice that, and it's not hard to see what the Chinese have been doing. I told you it's... Uh, I told you it's here. It's just you don't know it. They're going to use your phones. They're going to use this Internet of Things. It's all a weapon against you. Uh, so here's another story about all that. These devices that they use create a body of evidence against you in the world to come and the outcome that they want. And if you stay silent against it, it is going to take you out. If you don't take some of the ideas that I'm offering and mold them to what you need and the subject matter wrong you want to make right, these people are making the world in the future they want. It's happening. It's been happening, I guess is the point. This is what got me kind of compelled to continue broadcasting is that there's eh, maybe not much more new, but there's still more to say and explain how this thing was planned long ago and how it's turning out and continuing and your crickets to it. And we can stop that. And that's the thing, only reason why I, I think I continue. We can stop the thing in the future that's planned against our own better interest. We have to take responsibility. Like I was talking about the iodine. Uh, there's a whole lot more, not just iodine. It's not the end-all, be-all like any of this stuff. And we've got to be balanced about it. We have to bring the balance. We have to bring, we have to determine the risk against us, not let a risk manager bean counter to do it against us. Because we see the evidence, like today, no one is going to care more about you than yourself to do those things. And the list of, of uh, adequate that we're given is not even close. It's thousands of times less than what we need to be doing, how underachieving we are as people and as a society. And I can just say, when you start to achieve more properly what we should ought be doing and ought to have been doing, a lot of this starts to shed away. And so I just offer every week to try to offer something to get you to understand that, uh, have people step up in more proper ways. Uh, don't take this, you know, don't don't take it from these people. You don't have to. Uh, you don't have to get beat down either. And that means you did something wrong and, and take no cognizance of that. Uh, I don't uh, I want to talk about something else. Don't have the time. Thank you, Grimner, for what you do at reallibertymedia.com, everything. Thank you for the donation. Uh, I understand there was a donation or a couple of donations. Uh, thank you for those, even though we don't do, we don't do a, much of a fundraiser but once a year. Thank you for the ongoing support. It really help, does help out. It's a small thing to do, uh, a small network to keep going, and so it's not all overhead. Uh, Jules at UCY TV, Sound Minds, thank you very much. Everyone who favorites and likes and whatever, it's, uh, thank you for what you do on spreading the word about this thing, and let's get some people, let's get a lot more people motivated to get better involved. Thank you. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs are nature willing. another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose.
for opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, they just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 